This episode is incredibly timely since we just launched Your Magic Year. If you haven't heard about Your Magic Year, is a year-long program where I help you find magic in your business by sharing a training every month that's going to help you uncover and find the magic in your business and inside of you, and also by sending you on quests. But the other piece of your magic year is community. Community. Let's think about that. What is the importance of community in your business? And do you have it? Because that is so important. Do you ever feel lonely in your business? Being a business owner can be incredibly lonely. You might feel like you're the only person in your family, your friend circle, or your community that understands what it's like to run a business because you don't have anyone else around you that is actually running a business. People look at you and they say things like, yeah, that must be nice. You're just sitting around taking photos every day. They don't see that you're spending hours and hours behind the computer or the sleepless nights that you're staying up editing. I remember those days. They were not fun. I wish I could get those days back and go to bed with my husband at night, but I didn't. I stayed up all night long editing because that's what's normal in the photography world. That's what everyone does, right? You want to share your excitement about what you're doing to your friend's family, but they look at you like you're crazy. They tell you they would never pay your prices and that you should just charge less money if you want more clients. That's what my um, family told me. <laughs> Survey data from 2019 shows that 58% of Americans felt like no one in their life knew them well. <laughs> more recently, the U.S. Surgeon General released a warning for Americans saying that loneliness is actually a public health crisis, that one in every two Americans say they're lonely, and that impact on well-being can be as damaging as smoking or obesity on their lives. It's correlated with cardiovascular disease, depression, dementia, and premature death. This statistic right here is alarming, and it's scary. And when I heard it, I was like, whoa. That's crazy. And then I also thought back to a couple weeks before I heard this statistic. I was sitting in the hot tub with my husband. And I just broke down. And I was just like, I just feel so alone. And at that time, I didn't have a community that I was in. I was between communities. I was between coaches. I just felt like I didn't really have a community at that moment. And I said, I'm just so lonely. I feel like nobody gets it. Nobody understands what I'm going through. Like, the higher you climb in business, the lonelier it gets. The harder it gets to find people that understand what you're going through. The harder it gets to find people who are stepping right alongside of you because you have ran right past them. And all of a sudden, those people that once understood and got you don't get you anymore. I remember the day vividly when I was in the first year of my business, sitting at my mom's house and talking to my sisters and my mom about my business. And I remember my sisters saying, we would never pay that for portraits. Our friends would never pay that. We could never tell our friends to go use you. That's crazy. And to think my prices were so much lower than a tenth of what they are now, quite literally. My mom, she thought I was crazy because I wasn't using my college degree. I had gone to school for animal science. And I got into my last semester of college and was like, what the heck am I going to do with my life? I have this degree and I don't really want to go back to school anymore. That had always been the plan. Go back to school, Corinda. Go to vet school. Go get your master's. Go get your doctorate. Whatever it might have been. Like, those were all the things I was considering. I can honestly say that if I wouldn't have started my photography business, I probably would have gone back to college and got my master's. And I probably would have gone and gotten my doctorate and been a professor at a university, which is also why I love being here, being able to teach y'all, because it is something that is so near and dear to my heart and is something that clearly was on the horizon for me. I just didn't know which way it was going to come to fruition in my life that I would be sharing and helping and guiding and directing. A fun side note on that is that I was actually a long-term sub for three months as an ag teacher right after I graduated from college. I went and actually taught at my old high school for three months because they had lost an ag teacher. And I stepped in and 
I very quickly realized that teaching ag in high school, although I loved ag and it was such an important part of my life, um, being an ag teacher was not where I needed to be. It was awful. I cried all the time. I hated my life. Um, there were only so many times that you could scream at the top of your lungs and say, if y'all would just sit in your chair and watch the movie, I will give all of y'all a hundred for the day. But if you stand up on the desk, you're getting a zero. I kid you not. I said those words a lot. I went on this weird journey and that's got me to where I am today. But that's a side tangent. So I remember as I was wrapping up the time as an ag teacher at the end of that semester and considering, do I go and get my teaching certification so I can go back and teach? I could have that job if I wanted it. My mom thought I was crazy because I wasn't using my degree. But luckily, my husband was all in. And he cheered me along. And we weren't married at the time. We were engaged at the time. We got engaged in April of that year. And I worked at the high school from like March through the end of the semester. So he at the time, we were like about to get engaged, newly engaged. And he was like, just do it. Just run your business. I was doing a lot of senior sessions. I was shooting weddings at the time, actually. And I was starting to photograph newborns as well. My husband cheered me along. My stepdad actually cheered me along. I'm so incredibly grateful for him. My stepdad had his own business. He was in the construction business. And he was the one who sat there and looked at my mom and was like, Patsy, let her do it. Let her chase her dreams. Let her have her business. Like, she can do this. And it was really cool to have the support of my stepdad and my husband. I talked to a lot of photographers that don't have supportive spouses or significant others, that don't have supportive family members, that everybody in their circle is telling them that they're crazy, that everyone in their circle is saying they're charging too much money, that everyone in their circle just doesn't get it. And that is a crappy place to be in, guys. Like, just coming from my family, to some extent, like my sisters and my mom feeling like, no, like, why are you doing that? That's crazy. That was hard. And I had a couple of people that were in my corner saying, just do it. I know from talking to so many business owners that not everyone has that. And sometimes it's the people closest to them that doubt them the most. So I feel like this is important to say right now. Um, if you have people in your life that are doubting you and that are not encouraging you, it might not always be people that you can just cut out of your life. Because your significant other is probably pretty important. Your kids, your parents are probably pretty important. But I'm just going to encourage you to put some boundaries up. Understand and trust yourself. And don't look for outward approval in what you're doing from somebody that doesn't know what it's like to be in your shoes. Find people that support you and get you. It's tiring. It's exhausted. And some days when you're sitting at home working alone, it's downright lonely. Some days you're going to cry like I did in the hot tub that night. Like I just feel like you know, nobody gets it. Nobody understands what I'm doing. Even something as simple as going to church. And this might sound weird. It's just like going to church and being around other people and seeing like all these women that are moms and they're stay-at-home moms and they're fabulous moms. Like they're staying at home, homeschooling their kiddos or they have this career where they go into the office every day and like, they have these amazing careers where they're putting on suits and like heels and going into the office. I look around a lot of times and I'm like, does anybody else know what this is like? Does anybody else feel my pain? It's hard to relate. I seriously struggle to relate to people sometimes just because I feel like they're looking at me and saying, must be nice. And I feel like they don't understand. I've had my fair share of days. I've had my days when I'm just like, I just want somebody to bounce ideas off of. I just need somebody to lean on. My husband luckily has been fairly supportive and he's been that person. But honestly, it's hard on a relationship. One of these days, we're going to do a podcast episode together all about this. Because it is hard on a relationship. It is hard to have these really serious business conversations with a significant other. It just is not always a great dynamic and a place to have those conversations. Even if you have a supportive spouse, it can take a toll on your relationship or your relationship can all become centered around the business. 
And the thing is, is that even my closest friends don't get it. Other moms that I'm around don't get it. We have a nanny. My nanny takes my kiddo to do a lot of things. I feel really fortunate that we can have a nanny that takes my kiddo to go do things. And she takes him for weeks to like, he does pony club, for example. And she takes him to pony club for weeks. And then I show up and someone says, oh, you're his mom. And I'm like, yes, I do exist. Hello. Sorry. I'm a really busy person who's running their business during the day. And I want my kiddo to be able to go do things. But sometimes that means someone else is going to take him. It doesn't mean that I can just take three hours in the middle of the day to go take my kiddo to his writing lessons every single week. I go every few weeks, but every single week that doesn't happen. And as we have busy, crazy seasons like fall and spring where we're just doing a lot. And then we have quiet seasons where we get to go do more stuff. So that's how I look at these types of things. It's just weird and it's just different. And it sometimes feels like those people around me don't quite understand. But outside of having a couple of key people in my life, like my significant other, my stepdad, who were really encouraging in those early years, the thing that really, truly helped me get through those and the process of doing business was finding a good community of people that got it, a good community of people that understood it, a good community of people that were walking alongside me on my journey. My mentors that I've hired, the coaching groups that I've been a part of, those things really got me through it. Yes, my husband was helpful. Yes, my stepdad was helpful. Whenever my family, the rest of my family doubted me. But those coaching circles, those communities that I paid to be a part of, those were the places that were the most helpful in my journey. And I have met some of my best friends through the online groups, uh, my business besties, as I like to call them. My first mentor was named Aaron. And Erin had a coaching program that I joined like year one of my business. And the ladies in that group, legit, like they became some of my closest friends. Like we texted on the daily because we became such good friends. We became so close. We got to know each other. And over the years, that group has dispersed and a lot of them are doing different things now because this was over 10 years ago. But even I still feel like I know them so well and I still feel like they were a huge part of my life. And even a few years ago, like when I was traveling, we would meet up with Tia, one of the girls that was in our group and her husband, they came down to Nashville to hang out with my husband and I. We went to dinner together and we saw Miranda Lambert at the restaurant. And it's just cool. It's so cool to know that I have these relationships with photographers and business owners all over the world. That like literally I can be like, hey, I'm coming to Nashville. Do you and your husband want to drive up and let's hang out and let's do something? Even if we haven't seen each other in years or even if our paths have led us in different directions, that we still have those relationships. And I'm so grateful for those people. And there are lots of other amazing women who are in that circle of people too. But T is always a fun example since we got to see Miranda Lambert at a fancy steakhouse. <laughs> but honestly, we can have relationships and groups. We can get on group calls with people. We can get to know each other in Facebook communities. But I'm going to challenge you to like take those relationships a step further to set up a chat and just like hop on Zoom with somebody and get to know them. Ask them how their life is and share and be honest and be transparent about life. Take those relationships off of just this little Facebook group and really bring them to life. Get on the phone with somebody, like text somebody. Just get to know those people in those circles because as you grow in your business, you're going to need that support and you're going to need those people that you feel like have got your back. So when you're having a bad day, you can be like, hey, I need your support. Or when you see somebody else struggling or winning, you're there to support them either way. I am so thankful for these online communities that created real small groups or even some of the big groups, honestly, that have allowed me to connect and be myself and create real relationships beyond just business. And to be honest, today, my coaching clients tend to be some of the people that I'm the closest to because I talk to them. We laugh together. We cry together. We do life together. And we just had an in-person event. And it was so good, like getting to 
sit down in the evenings, have a glass of wine and just do life, talk like like the things that we discovered about each other were so cool. Like hearing something and I'm like, why have you never told me this? This is so cool that this is who you are and this is a part of your life. Like, why haven't you shared this with me? Well, I didn't think it was like that relevant to my business. And I'm like, no, like these are the cool things like getting to do life together, getting to know people, getting to discover who someone is as a person. And one of my coaching clients, I won't call her out by name, but if she had been struggling with signing her why. And I was like, hey, just give me some time. Give me a couple of days. Give me some, till the end of this, end of this retreat. I just want to be around you. I want to be in your presence. I want to just hear you talk. I want to hear your story. And I can almost guarantee you that by the time you leave here, I'm going to have a grasp on what this is, what's missing here. And I kid you not, in the last 60 seconds before I was dropping them off at the airport, we were just talking and it just hit me. And in that moment, I was like, holy crap, this is it. I get you. I understand you. I see you. Why did you not tell me these things? This is why you are different. This is why you're special. This is why you're unique. This is what needs to be in your business. This is what matters. And it's hard because business is business, but business is also your life. And business is also who you are as a person. And there's something special about being in a community and not just like being in a course. You buy a course, you download it, you get access to it. You may or may not ever log into it. Being in a community means being vulnerable, being transparent, getting to know people. And also learning in a way that is personal to you and feels good to you. And learning from people who give a crap about you. Geez, that's important to me. As a coach, I feel an immense amount of pressure. And if you ever meet me in person, like, I'm just going to be really transparent here. If you ever meet me in person, know that as somebody who used to be a courseaholic, um, so many times I've been in situations where I finally met people in person that I knew online that were mentors to me. And I've been so wildly disappointed. Walk into a room and be like, who is this person? Like, they act like they don't give two rats butts about me. <laughs> if you would say that. And it is so important to me that when there's somebody that I meet in person that I know from the online space, like, I want you to know that I actually do care about you. That is who I am as a person. And that is why I talk to so many photographers all the time online, like total strangers. If you ever catch me when I'm on a road trip, I'll be like, hey, I'm on a road trip. Who wants to chat? I know you need people to talk to. I want to build relationships with you. It's important for me to build those relationships if I'm your coach or if I'm not your coach, right? I'm going to encourage you to really find people, plug yourself into small, meaningful communities, put yourself in the room with people that you want to be like, because I don't know if you've heard this, you are going to become the people you surround yourself with. So if you're surrounding yourself with a bunch of poor, broke, starving artists who that is their mindset, that is their mentality, that's all they think about, chances are you're going to stay in the poor, starving artist mindset. But if you start to put yourself in circles of people who are working towards big things, who are doing big things, who have big hopes and dreams, you're going to find that you get so much further, so much faster. So I am begging you, I am pleading with you to be very aware of the people you're surrounding yourself with. Community is only good if it's good community and if it's people that are on the same path as you are and people who understand and get you. It's important to be around people who are stepping alongside of you, who are maybe one step behind you, and who are one step ahead of you. And the thing is, is that, and this is really important to me, and I'm going to say this. I'm like going really off on some tangents today, but it's just striking in court today with me. It is important to be with people a step behind you. Not everyone should be a step behind you, but some people should be. Because 
It is up to you to help the people and lift the people up who are set behind you. Because the best way to learn yourself is to share with somebody who's a step behind you in a community. So don't ever, if you ever come to me and you're like, mm, I don't want to be with people who are behind me. That's not cool. I only want people who are above me. That is not okay. And that is not a growth community mindset. Yeah, you want to have people that are a little bit ahead of you. But not everyone in the room needs to be ahead of you. Because when there's people who are not ahead of you, that is your place to step in and to help and to serve and to grow by growing other people. There is power in that. Find the people, plug yourself in, right? Also know that having a person to step ahead of you is important. Having people right beside you is important. Always seek inspiration. Always be growing. Always be a cheerleader for someone else. And always have a true leader there to support you. And when you have that, magical things start to happen. You don't have to be lonely in your business. You don't have to do it by yourself. But you might have to work hard to create those circles of people. Or in my case, pay to be in circles of people. I pay a lot of money every year to be in the right circle, in the right room of people. That are one step ahead of me. That can inspire me. That can push me forward. That I can look to and say, Oh my gosh, you're an inspiration. I want to be like you. And also to pick the person up that's stepping beside me. I'm going to encourage you to connect with others, to meet them on Zoom for a coffee date, to hop on the phone and connect with virtual friends, to meet up with them when you happen to be coming through town. Guys, like this is important. Those relationships are priceless and they are what will keep you sane as you go through this journey. Just know if you're looking for a community, we have a Facebook group. We have a free Facebook group that's a bigger group. And you're always welcome to come there, post and share in that. And I'm going to encourage you today, after you listen to this episode, go to our Facebook group, Geography Business Tune-Up with Corinda King, and post in there. Comment on someone else's post. Invite them to a virtual date. Get to know them. And in our coaching program, we have an even tighter knit space. We have a smaller, more curated group of people that are really like on that higher level that are striving for really big things. And we get together virtually each month on Zoom. If we have a chance to get together in person, like we did a few weeks ago, we get together in person. And we have this really cool group of people. And I know that my coaching clients can lean on each other. I, they're not just there for me. They're there for each other. And that is cool. And now that we have the Your Magic Year, that is going to give us another space for community that is not just the free for all everybody. It is not necessarily the highest of the high of my coaching clients. But Your Magic Year is a community of people. It's a secret squad of people that you're going to have in your corner. It's me that's going to be pouring some magic into your business each and every month. It's me who's going to be sending you on quests every month to do things, to grow, to stretch beyond your comfort zone. And that is why I'm so excited about this. It is accessible to everybody and it is super affordable. It is not like investing in a high-touch coaching program at all, but it is meant for anyone who's, you know what, I'm ready to be in the space. I want to be in Corinda's bubble. I want to learn from her. I want to grow, but I also want the other people that Corinda attracts, the people who are also working on themselves, growing in their mindset, growing a profitable business that they want to build an empire for themselves and their business. Like if that's you, that's where you need to be. So we will include the link to that um, in the show notes and in the description here. That way you can grab your spot there. So make sure you check that out. And I just want to tell you, if you're ever at an event in person, like imaging, come up to me, say hi to me, introduce yourself. Sometimes my brain is really bad at remembering <laughs> names. I'm not going to lie. That might be one of my weaknesses as a person is that I'm really bad with names. But once you start talking to me, my brain's Ah, I know who she is. I was driving down this random highway whenever I talked to her on the phone or she sent me a DM while I was at a horse show and I remember what she said. My brain works in a very strange way like that. Yay for all my neurodivergent friends out there. <laughs> but 
please come up to me. Please talk to me. Like, even if you've never talked to me before, even if you just followed me, if you've listened to the podcast, like, come tell me those things mean the world to me. Hug me if you want to hug me. Shake my hand if you want to shake my hand. I am actually not a hugger, but I will hug you. I will hug you. I, I love hugging people then once I get to know them, but sometimes I feel weird hugging strangers. So that's just a random confession. My husband says I should really stop telling people that because it makes people who are huggers just want to come hug me when they meet me to make me uncomfortable. We have a family friend or one of my friends is married to someone that is Greek and Greeks are really big huggers. Anyway, him and his family are really big huggers. And they know that I don't like hugging. So it's like when they see me, they're like, Corinda, come here. And they want to hug me. And then every time they point out the fact that they know it makes me slightly uncomfortable. And I'm like, y'all, I know you now. It's cool. We can hug. <laughs> come see me. Shake my hand. Hug me. Whatever you need to do for you. I'm there for it. Really, I cannot wait to meet you. And if y'all are going to be at imaging in January, start thinking about that because I will be at imaging and we have some amazing things happening at imaging. So make sure you put that on your schedule, get your ticket and all the good stuff. I'm happy to talk to you. Like, just DM me. Like, Karina, let's chat. If you're interested in a full-blown diagnostic call, apply to join my coaching program and you can get access to a diagnostic call with me too. You can find the link there in the show notes. It's masteryourmindmoney.com forward slash apply. And after you apply, you can actually schedule a real diagnostic call with me, a real formal call where we talk through your business. And that call is amazing as well. If you join our Your Magic Year program, you're going to get access to me on these calls that we're going to do on these trainings we're going to do each month. That's going to be amazing. There's going to be opportunities to talk there, to connect with other business owners. And I cannot wait for that. I would just say, don't be afraid to reach out. That's what I want you to know. You are not alone. I might be a business coach. I might be sitting here on this podcast or if you're watching on YouTube telling you these things. But honestly, like I am a person and I love people and I love y'all and I want you to be successful. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this podcast. Like this podcast does not pay me anything. It costs me money to run. But I'm here doing this because I love y'all and I want to see y'all grow and succeed. So let's talk just reach out to me. A lot of times I get on calls with people and at the end of the call, they're like, whoa, I did not expect you to just talk to me and share so much and just be so helpful. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help. I'm here to see you grow. I'm here to see you be successful. And one day when you're successful, I hope you can say, Corinda played a small part in that. Even if you just heard something on a podcast episode, it makes my day when somebody is like, hey, Corinda, I learned this thing from you. And I went out and used it and I made $5,000 for my client for the first time. I had a coaching client the other day and she sent me a message and she was like, holy crap, I just had my first like $5,000 client. This would have never been possible if I wouldn't have found you and if I wouldn't have joined your bubble and if I wouldn't have joined your program and just gone out on a limb. This works. That makes me happy. Yeah, it'd be cool if I was out there making $5,000 for my old client. But I've actually come to a place where I enjoy watching other people succeed and make money more than I like watching myself succeed, which is a weird thing to say. I think the first time that I experienced that, which just brings back a memory, when I was in college, I actually showed lambs and goats in high school. And I traveled all over the state of Texas showing lambs and goats in high school. And I was pretty good at it. I was like top 10 in the state for showing lambs my senior year. We were at lamb shows literally every weekend. And Whenever I was in college, I started going back to my high school that I eventually ended up teaching at down the road and for a few months and it has a long term sub. So that's a whole other story. But so I ended up going back to my high school and I would help the kids with their animals and I would show up and I would teach them how to show and just pour into them the same way somebody had poured into me when I was learning. And I would go back and just help them. And I remember very vividly. The first time I got to sit and watch some of, some of the kids that I helped show, learn to show their animals in the show ring, I'm getting emotional thinking about it because it was just like such a cool experience. And I, I think genuinely it was the first time that I realized how important it was for me to help other people. And I remember going back to the school show 
And I remember standing on the outside of the ring with like my face glued against the arena fence, just like peering through the arena, being like, look at her go. Oh my gosh, she's doing so amazing. And I very distinctly remember watching Brianna and show her animal that year and just being like, yay, that's so amazing. And just feeling I felt like I was a mom. Like, I felt like I was her mom cheering her on. I felt like I remember watching my mom when I was growing up, like watching her like literally stand out there after sacrificing everything. I'm going to get really emotional here. After sacrificing everything so I could go show my lambs and essentially wobbling around, hobbling around on a broken foot, (laughs) hauling me to with me to lamb shows all over the state. And I remember the first time I won a belt buckle and I just remember looking at her and just seeing her cry and seeing how proud she was of me. And now that's what this is for me. I am the mom standing on the outside of the arena fence, like cheering my kid on and saying, you can do it. You're going to do it. And then being there to cry for my child when she went. That's what my coaching clients are for me. And that's why I love this. And I don't know why I get so emotional talking about it, which is very strange. And if y'all are listening to the podcast, you're like, wow, her voice sounds really awkward. Right now, it's because I get emotional about things. When I'm really passionate about them or really excited about things, my voice changes. And I, yeah, if I get really excited about things, my voice does this too. But it's important for me. And it's important for me to help y'all and to point you in the right direction and to pour into y'all. And y'all, sometimes I suck a little bit at managing conversations in the dms i'm not gonna lie so some days there's 20 of y'all messaging me all at once and i forget to respond to one of you so i do apologize if i've ever forgotten to respond to you but it does get a little overwhelming the dms when i get so many messages but just know that i see you i care about you i love you i want you to succeed i want you to reach out to me i want you to post in our groups i would love to see you and your magic here because i would love to be able to help you in an actual program that's structured in a way to help you and your business and to give you that community and to give you that direction that you need. Right now, we're also offering, like I said, those diagnostic calls to anyone that joins for our program for a discounted rate. If you go and apply for our coaching program, masteryourmindmoney.com forward slash apply, you'll have the opportunity to schedule a diagnostic call with me as well. Those calls are freaking amazing. You're going to get so much value out of it. And if they are much less expensive than like an actual one-on-one call with me, but you're going to get so much great value out of that. So you can grab one of those right now as well. And just send me a message, like just reach out, post in our group. Let's talk. So I hope you all found value in this. I know I went off on a few random tangents and uh, I just felt like it was important to share this topic with y'all and to let you know that you're not alone. You have people around you who are also doing it. You have other people that get it. There are people there that also feel lonely and that are also looking for those relationships and also looking for those people to be their cheerleader or to cheer on for themselves. Because cheering for someone else is the greatest thing in the world. Helping someone else is the greatest thing in the world. Doing it yourself is cool too. But also know that every single person in a circle or a group or community that you're in serves a purpose and a reason and they're there for a very particular purpose and I think at the in-person thing we did a few weeks ago I really saw that come to fruition because it was really cool to see such a very diverse different group of people coming together who are all like different human beings different beliefs different values and to know that each and every person that was put there for a reason and to know that We did this fun thing where we put all these pieces of paper into a bowl with some different things about ourselves. And there were probably like 70 pieces of paper in there. There were a lot. Every person put 10 pieces in. And to know that we only drew a very small number of papers out of that thing to learn about each other. But the papers that were pulled out of that bowl, they were pulled out for a reason. There was some deep stuff shared. There was some really powerful, there was some really painful, there were some really joyous things that were shared on those pieces of paper. There were some crazy conversations that happened. I like, I just was so overwhelmed, like after just the first night being like, 
oh my gosh, like these things that my coaching clients are trusting me to share and are sharing with each other. And just like knowing that we're able to sit and have these conversations and it's just about life. Um, like knowing that my coaching clients trust me and knowing that we have that group of people that were put together for that reason. And that those things that we shared with each other were so powerful and meaningful and the conversations that had were so good. And that cannot happen without community. That cannot happen without a curated community of people. And sometimes that curated community of people happens by chance. And I believe like in that situation for me, it was like, this is a God thing. These people are put in this room for a reason. And those of you that might have been there listening to this, now you get to hear the me going home and being like, oh my gosh, this is so powerful, like the things that happened. But I believe that people are put into a place for a reason. People are put on a path for a reason. And sometimes we don't always know that. Sometimes we don't always know the path. Sometimes we don't always know where we're going. I didn't realize I would be here today on a podcast teaching photographers 10 years ago when I started my business 10 plus years ago. I had no idea, but look at where I'm at. It's because I've trusted and I've just been okay with being like, you know what, whatever's going to happen is going to happen and going to come to fruition and just trusting blindly, even when things are scary all. And knowing that I have the people there to support me, cheer me on, pick me up, encourage me if I need it. That's what's important. So if you're looking for that, or your magic year is going to be amazing. It is super affordable. I mean, it is the lowest priced offer we've ever had. And the price will go up over time. Go check out the page. It'll be in the show notes or in the comments. It's your magic year. And I'll include the link there. And also too, if you're ready to just take things to a different level to really have the one-on-one -on -one support, the really tight knit, high touch, high value, tons of information, everything you ever needed to know to run your business, then apply to join us inside Master Your Mind of Money because that is where that is at. Um, if you're like, mm, this Master Your Mind of Money full coaching program sounds amazing. I'm not sure if it's for me yet. Start off in our Your Magic Year program. Start off there. Give it some time. Get on a few trainings with us. And see how you're feeling. Like you're going to know from that if the full thing is a good fit for you and if it's where you want to go. And also too, it's going to give you that direction to start to grow, to start to stretch. And it's also going to give you that community that you're all telling me that you need so badly. And that I know you need so badly and that I need the community so badly still. I'm still there. I'm still doing the thing, y'all. I'm still building a business. I'm still growing. Like these things are still happening. I understand the struggles. I feel it. I feel when the economy shifts. I see it in my business. I see when Google changes SEO practices that I have to do all the things again. So I just want you to know that you're not alone. I'm doing it with you. There's tons of other amazing photographers doing it with you as well that believe in the same things. Get in a circle. Get plugged in with them. Come to our Facebook group. Introduce yourself, guys. Connect with someone else. Go leave a sweet comment on someone else's post today. Do something to support and encourage and lift up the rest of the photography industry. Bye, guys.